I'm always on the lookout for like a really, really good base I could use as a starter base for like my next playthrough. Because I will 100% do a new playthrough of this at some point. And maybe do like more hardcore of rules as far as carry weight and stuff goes. It's just too much my, my first time through. I also don't want to be... I don't want to encumber myself with... Well, that's a funny way of saying it. I don't want to burden myself. That's still a funny way of saying it. I don't want to... I don't want to make myself do all the editing that is required right now. Uh, if I was to deal with, like, the hardcore carry weight rules and stuff. I think next time around, what I may do is, like... I will increase my carry weight by a set amount for like every follower I get. So like maybe every follower I'll add plus 200 carry weight and like every horse I acquire, I'll add like plus 600 carry weight since they all have 600. So I mean, like realistically, once I get like three or four horses, I'll have, you know, like 3k carry weight. It won't be too big of a deal. Plus, you know, a couple followers will have like 4k carry weight. This, you know, won't be too bad. It'll be reasonable. What was that? Is someone there? Is someone there? Is someone there? Time to finish this! Well, that's, that's taken care of. Nord fights. That's right. We just bash him in the head. Cotton merchant's hat. Steel mace? Spirit Wolf, some money, some random stuff. I think doing a mage playthrough would be really cool. The issue with it, um, that'd be like the exact opposite of what I'm doing right now. The issue that I'd have with it is that um, it's just so much menu spam. I've seen better workmanship from Nord children only ten winters old. Man, kinda harsh. I don't I don't know about like I don't know about that, bro. I mean I don't think kids are making places this this uh big and intense and stuff, you know? Like, that's that's a bit harsh. Plus, like these guys didn't build it, you know? They're just squatting here. Hmm, Shrine of Stendar. Nothing new here. All the old same stuff. Same old stuff. Old same stuff. Whatever. You know what I mean. Last mistake. That load screen being attacked, though, that's always fun. Do your worst. This went pretty well, all things considered. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good compromise. That way, like, I'm not worrying constantly about, you know micromanaging items between my horses and and like I'll I'll even I'll even do like hardcore with it like you know if uh if a horse dies for example then they die you know and that's it I have to get a new horse so I have to be really careful with them and invest in their armor and stuff although if the barding you know thing keeps happening where they keep losing their armor randomly and they, they won't re-equip it, then maybe I won't do that. I don't know. We'll see. Because it's kind of bullshit, to be honest. Huh. That's not a. That's not like. You know. 
um, a bit creepy. Note for Dagmar. Dagmar, if I catch you fucking another one of those wenches, I'll send you on spider killing duty. Their screams keep me up at night, and I can't go ransoming no wench with a filthy bastard in her belly, now can I? Leave him alone. Okay, so I uh, blatantly was uh, a rape story after all. Yeah. Okay. I see. This is probably added by a mod, I would say. Because, uh, I mean, it's not that Bethesda wouldn't publish something that dark because New Vegas, Cook Cook, that's a much darker story. But they didn't write that as well. That was done by Obsidian. I don't think Bethesda has the, um... I don't think they have the spine to put something quite that dark into one of their games. Then again, like, Frost is also really, really dark. The, you know, the mod Frost is also very, very dark, and it shies away from that stuff, too. I understand. Honestly, I honestly understand if, 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 if a game doesn't want to deal with that subject matter because it's triggering for some people, you know, um... I don't know. I, I get it. This is an escape for people. I don't really have a, a big opinion on this. Like, I'm fine if it exists in the thing I'm playing as long as it's, like, world building or, you know, an important part of the story. Like, like in Game of Thrones, like, I was fine with all the sex and, you know the other terrible stuff. Well, I mean, the sex, sex is not a terrible thing. But, you know what I'm saying, like... In Game of Thrones, I was fine with... the gratuitous violence and... poor way that some characters were treated, because it was always important for the story... to be, you know, that it happened that way. Um... It always made for an interesting story. Like Theon, for example, in Game of Thrones was a very, very interesting character. The redemption arcs that some of the people had were very interesting. For example. You can't redeem someone without first making them terrible. That's something that um, uh, Brandon Sanderson, he, he plays with it a little bit in Stormlight Archives. I, I won't say he doesn't do anything anywhere near as severe as like what um, George R. R. Martin does with Game of Thrones. Um, which is interesting, like... I mean, I don't want to spoil Game of Thrones for you if you've never watched it, but let's be real. If you're if you're playing or you're, if you're watching someone play Skyrim, I can't imagine that you didn't watch or didn't you know didn't like the one of the greatest um, like grimy, gritty fantasy uh, shows of all time. I can't imagine that you didn't like it. Maybe, maybe look if you're watching this. On this episode, if you're this far in, you enjoy this series this much, and you hate Game of Thrones, I would be very interested to hear your opinion on it. Uh, sincerely, I'd, I'd be interested to hear why you didn't like it. Not, and, and look, season 8 doesn't count. Like, if you if you liked everything but, like, uh, one season or something, or a couple seasons, doesn't count. Does not count. Because, yeah, season 8 was a big letdown. Season 7 was... Had some high points, but um, was also a little bit of a letdown. Everything before that, though, was, in my opinion, pretty fantastic. And it still was not a terrible show. It just was done poorly at the end. And, like, I kind of don't blame the show creators. I know they get a lot of flack for what they did with the end of it. But I kind of can't really blame them. I mean, they gave George R. R. Martin a long time to finish Winds of Winter... 
And he just couldn't do it. And here we are, years later, many years later, and it still isn't done. And we just have to kind of accept that it's probably never going to get done. Mud crabs? And skeevers, eh? Come on, show me what you've got. Are you prepared to die? He's a skeever, guys. It's a skeever. I know they're generic AI AI lines, but I just find it funny that they're emoting their roleplay. Ah, oh, vampire! Their roleplay emoting at this this poor rat. I couldn't get that soul, huh? Vampires count as sentient, so you can't take their souls? Alright, well, I was curious. Hey, vampire gauntlets. I have not seen proper armor for vampires. Takes care of that. It's a good thing they all have, you know, a dress code. What is that stench? Rotting wood, perhaps? That can't be good. Man, that just reminded me of something. This this just triggered a memory of mine from when I was a kid. Him saying about that stench. What's that stench? So, like, when I was a kid, I had a babysitter um, whose family was kind of weird. A little bit dysfunctional. Uh, more than a little bit dysfunctional. The... Um, the babysitter was, you know, like a, I don't know, she was like 17 or 18, something like that. And her brother was a bit younger, like he was, um, I don't know, like maybe 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there, or maybe 16 at most. But, you know, for me, as like a, I don't know, eight or nine year old, something like that, he was really, really cool. Like, I I was like, you know, when you're that young and you hang around, you get to hang around with an older person, an older kid, you, like, worship them, you know? You just think they're just, they're just so cool. And, uh, his name was Paul, and he was very into... Like, you know the stereotype of the satanic heavy metal... <clears throat> teenager like the like the really bad one that like all the people in the 90s and the 80s were so afraid of okay that was actually him like he was actually the stereotype like the literal stereotype of the, the satanic worshiping metalhead and i have nothing but respect for metal and i don't really care about you know the whole religious stuff uh do what you want and all that like, and most, most, uh, supposed Satanists, like they're part of the church of the, sat the Satanic Church or whatever, they're not really Satanists, they're just atheists that, they're just contrarians, okay? They, they like to be contrary. That's the end of that. That's really all they are. They're just anti-religious, they're not really, and they're also very anti-religion and government, which I don't actually think is a bad thing. Um... But no, Paul was actually a full-on Satanist. Like, devil-worshipping Satanist. Um, was very into the occult stuff, was very into witchcraft and stuff. Um, was just... Yeah. Um, very into, like, vampires and... Um, would pretend to be a vampire. Like, I remember as a very young child I, I i think i was probably seven maybe or so he knew how much i liked cats i because i've always loved cats okay close oh. Stop right there. oh shit i didn't know sorry can we overlook this all right 
But you just watch yourself. Next time, I might not be so lenient. I didn't even think about what I was doing here. I was just like walking around. <laughs> I was just like walking around like, hey, I'm just going to break in here. Where am I at? Oh, we're on the outskirts of Riften, I guess? Mary Fair Farm. Okay. Um. Anyway, I like cats a lot, and Paul knew this. And so, Paul would grab cats and pretend that he was uh, sucking their blood and killing them. And I would, like, beg him to stop because I felt bad for the cats. That's the kind of person he was, uh, which I don't, may seem stupid, but when you're, like, seven, I actually believed he was killing the cat at the time, you know? Like, and I was, like, in tears because I felt so bad for the cat. Yeah, that was Paul. Um, by the way, Paul is now a severe fundamentalist Christian who, at a... Um, a gathering I was at, uh, at, a, at a, a funeral I was at, where he also happened to attend, um, he was talking to some uh, other extremely devout religious folks. Um, look, I'll, I'll just I'll just say it. They were they were Amish, okay? Well, and he was talking to the Amish about how, you know, he was this reformed. Christian and everything and uh, how that he feels though that um, oh it's a spirit wolf it's Ilya's spirit wolf he feels that um, the man in the relationship should simply just own his wife Com like completely own them as in ownership as in she is his to do with what he wishes and you know even the Amish guys that were there were like, whoa, dude. <laughs> That's a bit too much. Like, when you start freaking out the Amish guys, when your religious beliefs are a bit too devout, too extreme for the Amish, I think you've pushed too far. I think you've gone a bit too far. You straight off the path a little bit. I probably have offended one or two people. Not many, but one or two. And I'm sorry if I have, but uh, that's how I feel about that. It's a bit extreme. Anyway, what was I saying? Paul, right, Paul. God, it got really dark out and stuff really quick. Um, Paul did stuff like that, and one of the things that he did was uh, there was a... Oh, we're going to... They're going to let me in? Well, thank you. Oh. We're going to let the dogs out. Ooh, let the dogs out. But you let me in. It was only one. Is there... Do you say die already so I can take your stuff? That's very accurate. That's actually... Well, that's what I say. That's my line. That's my line, dude. Die already so I can take your stuff. That's what I say. I guess we go through. Anyway, one of the things that Paul had on his parents' property when he was a kid, and I was a much younger kid, was uh, this old bus. And he had, I guess, painted it with bright red paint that looked just like blood. I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced that it wasn't blood. Because the whole thing had this extremely sharp metallic scent to it. And I can still smell it to this day. It's almost like... It, it's almost like... Um, hmm. Coppery is the best way I can describe it. Even though... I don't know. If you've ever tasted a battery... Like, not the inside, obviously, but, like, if you ever tasted a battery, it's similar to that. Can I open this and you be friendly? Nope. Over here. That's how a true Nord fights. Apparently not. Anyway, this whole bus, like, the windshield, it, it was, it was painted in a way that it was, like, looked like there was blood splashed all over it. 
and he would take me down there and tell me stories about how, um, about how it was a bus that had crashed and a bunch of kids had died on it and stuff. And he'd make up these really gruesome stories about it. And I 100% believed him because I was like eight and impressionable, you know, so. Anyway, that whole vampire and the stench thing, it just, it just brought it up to me. Made me think of that. Holy crap, I'm gonna die. I haven't saved in a long time. Okay, good. I'm not gonna die. If I lost all that progress, I'd be very sad. Yes, saving. Good doggy, stay there. But like all of that just got I, I hadn't I haven't thought about Paul and about the fact that I was babysat over there um by his sister for a long, long time been ages but him saying that what's that stench it kind of reminded me of that brought that all back sometimes you just have those things that sort of bring things back to you you know that's trap Oh, apparently. Interesting. Can I throw this? I think I can. What if I do this? It does work. Interesting. But. Ugh, I thought so. I knew there'd be something back here. Secret area. Secret unlocked. I also watched um, The Lost Boys when I was over there, which is not actually that scary of a movie. Like, and I kind of like it now, but back then it was maybe a bit much for me when I was that young. We watched a bunch of scary movies over there that I really shouldn't have watched. I think I ended up watching like Hellraiser and um, maybe some Freddy movies and stuff over there. He was a really big horror movie fan. Yeah, uh, true, true fact, he was a complete, like, worst possible, you know, every parent's nightmare, full-on Satanist, uh, as a kid. Nice job, men and ladies. I guess man and ladies. Bandits are cowards. Just you, okay. Hey, silver bolts, very nice. I guess some people just hop from like one extremist belief to another and they there's like no in between with them. They're just always extreme. And I don't know. Maybe he just needs a way to justify being a bad person. That must be it. You know, um, when he was satanic and worshiping Satan, then well, that was a way for him to justify being a bad person because he was worshipping Satan. And so, in some weird way, it was okay because he embraced the evil, I guess. Would be the thought there, I'm not really sure. But, uh, this is Psychology Hour, by the way. Psychology 101 with Wandy, who has no idea about psychology, and you definitely shouldn't take any advice from him. But, um, I'm talking about it anyway, because I gotta talk about something while I run through here and kill bandits and loot wolves and stuff. Um, got to put on my lock picking things now. Peerless lock picking, yes. 
and waste a lot of time getting in here. But yeah, he hopped from the, you know, whole Hail Satan thing to the whole uh, I own my wife because I'm a fundamentalist extremist Christian thing. Because I guess one is a tiny bit more acceptable to society, but either way, he's just a weird, abusive person towards his wife, I guess, and it is terrible to anyone around him. Anyway, um, yeah, he's a weirdo. My gosh, that was hard. Ooh, they got lots of coin purses back here. Worth it, maybe. There'll be a lot in here. Oh, it's pretty damn good. Actually, underwhelming. Ooh, a staff of heal other. Um, that's kind of nice. I can heal my companions. Cool. Perhaps I could give that to a companion and they could just run around healing each other. If I gave that to one of my companions, would they just become a healer? Like, would that work? Wonder if they have the AI to use it. Be interesting. Three more rats. Is there anything here? This is a more extensive dungeon than I would have thought it would have been. I mean, it's not a dungeon. Well, it's it's a keep, but it is a dungeon. Yeah, it's it's a it's a dungeon. It qualifies. Hmm. Ah, okay. You know, Skeevers used to try to fight me. Not anymore. They just run away. I wonder if that's like a level thing. Get to a certain point and they just... Run away instead. I'm gonna have to retemper my sword pretty soon. The tempering lasts for a surprisingly long time. I didn't expect it to last quite so long. The Cook's Journal... Meat, meat, meat. That's all they ever want. I made them some nice grilled leeks, and then they threw them in my face. I told them that if they'd bring me w some fish or venison, I'd cook it up. But all they ever do is waste their wages at the ring. But maybe there is a way I can get them some meat. There's a way... Hello. There you go. You got wrecked, bro. I'm sorry, but you got destroyed. Thank you for the cheese wheel. Huh? There's someone there? Come on. Oh. Oh. A lot of meat. Probably heal. I gotta go back at some point pretty soon. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me again. This oh my god, there's so much meat. Hello? Who's there? Just all wolf meat. So how are they getting the wolf meat? Oh, it's dog. Lulls. <laughs> I 
By the way, someone told me to go and like remember when we when we did the um the Daedric Prince of Madness uh Shiogorath when we did his quest and there was that invisible crazy guy um who was like a really high level Daedra. Someone told me to wabajack him. And that's a really good idea. I don't know why I never thought of that myself, but... Actually, I do know why. It's because I'm not very creative. But, um... Yes, good idea. And we will do that. Just, like, don't let me forget to do that at some point. To go back to, um... Was it Winterhold? Wherever that place was. That city up the north. I mean, I can find it on the map. I just don't remember the exact name. The Marksmanship Lesson. I'll take it. Uh-oh. Eh. No big deal. We'll be fine. Is there more here? I don't think there is. I mean, I want to keep playing, but like, I am, I am so tired. It's a weekday. I don't usually record on weekdays because we, my weekdays are like, I come home from work, I'm hungry, I eat, and then it's like, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm passing out pretty much. So I don't have a lot of energy to make good entertaining videos, but I really, really wanted to play. And I like, can't really play without recording for this series, you know? Unless I were to start a new character, which I don't really want to do because it'd be a pain in the ass. And I'm already well progressed in this character and I don't want to lose my progression and start over again. Then if I get more progressed or if I like my new character better, then I won't want to play my current character. Please do not step on that. Here you guys go. There's like a ton of mead here for you. You freaking drunkies. Knock yourselves out. Whoop. Okay, go back and loot real quick. Is someone there? Not sure what's going on over there. Maybe I'll install Oblivion again. I've been really itching for Oblivion since I played this a bit. The more I get into it, the more I want to play some Oblivion. I could find like a Waba Jack for Oblivion. That'd be kind of cool. Anybody there? With how good this series has done, I hope to do uh, the rest of the Elder Scrolls series too. Because like Morrowind is actually my favorite, I think, of all of them. I mean, I don't know, like. I think Skyrim is, like, more replayable for me because Skyrim is just better, like, more mods, and it's much more modern, and it, it's it's just, I think, better to play in general. But, like, Morrowind, man. Morrowind was my introduction to the Outer Scrolls, and it will always just hold this amazing special place in my heart. My introduction to Bethesda games in general my first Bethesda game. Hey, there is a... Well, there's one of these. There's still no smelter here. A bunch of various ores and a chest. Will there be ore in the chest? I also want to go back and play Fallout 3 again. Um, maybe without the extreme overhaul. I don't know. They, they did update it. Um... What was it called? Uh, Vicious Waste. That was the mod I played in Fallout 3. Or maybe I play Vicious Waste and play the updated version, which I think they did patch some stuff, which, like, it wasn't, like, directly based on what my suggestions, I don't think, but, like, I'm pretty sure they, they kind of watched me play it and they saw that, okay, some things are overpowered, some things are need to be nerfed, some things are bad balance-wise... 
and they made some changes and updates to it, which I think are probably good in general. Like, it was probably pretty good changes overall. Where, this place is huge. When does it end? A single septum on the ground there. I tell you, this province is losing its grip. The bandits become more brazen every day. But I will say that the... The... Oh, we have to get our, our gloves back on. I forgot. Or not our gloves. Our uh, amulet necklace. Totally forgot. Is it on? I guess it's already on. Okay, never mind. Was it a ring? Okay, it was a ring. Never mind. So what ring are we putting on here? Fire resist ring. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna get you out of here, Wolf, just to kill you. I'm pretty sure, but I mean it is what it is, man. You can either stay in there and starve because your bandit friends are gone. Or you can die here. That's it is what it is, buddy. I let you out and you chose violence, you know? They had dogs in here too. Yeah, so so he was feeding them dog meat. Which is disgusting. I mean, I don't know. Maybe dog meat's delicious. I've never had it. I don't think I'd ever want to have it. Which I realize is hypocritical of me, in the extreme. Just because I'm used, I'm I'm not used to eating dogs, and therefore I don't want to eat dogs. And I think it's like I wouldn't say it's revolting. I just um, there are alternatives, you know. So. Why eat dog if you don't have to, would be my thought. I'm, I just got my gloves off. I'm going to have to put them back on for that master door over there. Makes me very sad. Nope, he chose violence. Hey, level up. Very nice. Do I want to... I might hold on. Oh, crap. I can't... I can't escape now, though. We have to level up. Okay, well. Whatever, then. Yeah, I gotta put my lock-picking ring back on. This is just, um... Oh, nice, got it. Quite a bit quicker than normal for me. And there's, like, nothing much in here. Master lock, and it was for that. That's it, huh? Even Ilya is yawning. Okay, so I, I think we're actually done now. That's everything. That was a big, long dungeon. I feel like I went the wrong way, too. I don't know. I think we could just go back through here and get out of here the other way. Is this right? We just keep going up. We're probably getting out of here eventually. It's like back around the other side. Don't really want to go here. We go up this way. Oh boy. Watch out, guys. So one of you is going to get hit by that and you're going to keel over instantly. 
It'll be when, like, they're almost stopped. Okay, never mind. We're good. Nope. And it, I, I, I called it. Are you downed? Yeah, they're downed. I knew it, man. That one little stone just decided it was going to keep rolling for a tiny bit longer, and they stumbled over it. And there we go. I heal you. You know what? It's an opportunity for me to spend some healing points and uh, get some easy restoration skill. There we go. Did you do it again? <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, man, you get one. Okay, you get one. It's an aura of healing. You'll eventually get back up. You'll be fine. Walk it off. That was a long-ass dungeon. I think we've come out at a different spot than we came in at. We never actually got up on top of this thing either. The whole idea was to get up on top. I guess that's over here, not over there. How do I... How do I get to the other place? What was that? This is like a higher tier than we were at before, but I still can't... Okay, here we go. Probably go up through here. That makes sense. You picked a bad time to get lost, Frank. <laughs> Victory. The triple tap. I guess I could have um, improved my weapon back at that weapons bench thing. I do have Malachite on me. This is how we get up here. Someone there stab you in the back. That guy actually hurt. Decent gear on him, maybe. Yeah. Not bad. Elven Light Crossbow did pretty good damage. Silver bolts. Okay, thanks. We'll take those for fighting vampires. Could be one more guy up here. Probably should save, just in case. Hmm. Iron battle. Oh, it's just iron, though. Yeah, whatever. It looked like it was glass because of the enchant, but it's not. Ah, oh, it's a big freaking skull. When it's on that shelf like that, you realize how large it is. Red Eagle, Wolf Queen, Lunar Lorcam. Not sure what that is. I've read it before, though. Was this Shock? 10%. Okay.
Okay, some interesting stuff. We've got a bed here, too. Probably is not the best place to sleep out in the open here without a proper fire to warm you up or anything, I guess, but... Maybe there are worse things in this world. So that's all, huh? Alright. Cool. Well, it's getting late. And we ought to probably camp somewhere for the night. Uh, we could camp inside, I guess, but... I don't know, this, this fort seems like an okay place to camp to. I think maybe I'll go inside of one of the... I think, I think I'll go inside one of the towers. That'll be out of the rain at least. But it'll still have good enough ventilation that we're not going to, like, die because it's, you know, smoke and everything. Should probably actually go to where the tower is, huh? Might make sense. Never looked over here either. Nothing really here though. Oh, we could have gone over here as well. Well, anyway. This tower will... Maybe. Yeah, it's probably okay. Put this guy outside. You're getting out of here, buddy. There you go. Adios. Yeah, I'll put down the uh, the tent here. I think it should be fine. Make a fire in here. It's out of the elements at least, but it's ventilated, so you know, we won't die of smoke inhalation or anything. Makes sense to me. But I think I'll end it here for this one, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.